Hello my lovelies, welcome back to my channel. In today's video we will be talking about my own experience with the interview of Emirates. I was a flight attendant for Emirates but that was held years ago and I was accepted for the from sorry the first time I will talk about that how did I react what did I say and everything and how I was selected from the first time and keep on watching till the end of the video if you like because I will give you an example of someone who was my batchmate that we joined together years ago and he is an example of someone who really wanted to be a cabin crew and he kept trying so I will talk about his story and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're new with us hit the thumbs up share the video if you like it and let's start before we start i would like to remind you guys of instagram please join us on instagram i do lives and I take you guys live with me and you can ask me any question, any professional question that you like. Also, I bring cabin crew with me live and they talk about their experience with the recruitment day. Also, they can give you many tips from their side because maybe my tip is different from another person's tip. We're all different, right? And also, I bring live with me some important persons that okay I don't mean important look okay whatever you know what I mean like some people who really changed their lives and they built themselves from scratch so please join us if you like and I do lives at 11 p.m. Algeria time which is um, GMT plus one and that is only until Ramadan finishes and there's still a few days left and then we will do another time and hopefully we will agree on a time here I will try and make a post for you guys on YouTube so you tell me at what time you think it's really good and you will all be there and we can help each other out okay and let's start talking about my experience with the recruitment day with Emirates. I think I told you many times before that I never planned to be a cabin crew. That was never ever my goal in life. I didn't even like think that was a glamorous job or a good job. And I'm not someone who likes to travel. I don't like to travel alone, not to travel in general, but I don't like to travel alone. You know, if I go travel, I like to go travel with my family, with my friends. Of course with my husband, you know, like before I wasn't married, but like now, of course, I would only want to travel with my husband. You know, even when I was a cabin crew, I, when, I, when, I, when I got married, I only want to take my husband with me on every flight. Every flight that I go, I just want to take my husband with me, you know. I don't want to go visit the cities alone, not alone with the crew, but then it, at the same time, you know, this is, I, this is not someone that I want to enjoy with them, you know. And also, it will make you feel weird. Because before I got married, I used to enjoy, like, you know, visiting the cities and everything, enjoy eating glamorous stuff and having only glamorous things. But then when I got married, every time I'm like, he's there, you know, he's just working and at home and I'm like traveling and, you know, pampering myself. So I will just stay in my room this time, you know, I will not go out. Poor guy, he's just in Dubai and I'm like traveling and visiting, so I'll just stay at home and Skype him. So you will feel that when you have a partner, you will actually feel that. If you're like me, I don't know if everyone feels that, but I felt that big time and it hit me and it was one of the reasons that it made me like, I don't want to do this anymore. Like, I don't want to always be traveling and he's there and he's not with me. I want to take him with me everywhere. So you will feel that. Anyways, yeah. So I didn't, like, I'm not someone who's really passionate about traveling and I want to visit the world. I'm not that kind of person. And I told you before that I'm not someone who is, like, dealing with customers all the time. I didn't work in a customer service field. But then at the same time, I'm a very chit-chatty person. Maybe I was born for this, you know, I was born for this field. But I've never realized that I am born for this until I work there. So basically, when I went for my assessment day, um... It was fine, like I went with actually with my best friend, both of us, we went and it was fine. Like, you know, the CV drop was super easy and there were like not many people because it was like five years ago or five, not five, like more than five, like five and a half, almost six, I'm not sure, but um, it was like not a lot of people because not many people heard about recruitment in Algeria back then, not like now, you know, you find like thousands of people, but before it was easier, you know. I think there were like 600, you know, something like that. So not many people. And 
I am very like and also I wasn't afraid you know because I was like whatever you know if it happens happens if it doesn't happen like God doesn't want this job for me so always be a believer please when you go don't be stressed when you stand in front of that recruiter because you never know if this is meant for you then you know you will have it but if God wants something else for you then you will just be sad for nothing and God has something better for you you know for you as a person not something better maybe you will not see it better as a job but then better for you as a person anyways I entered I found the recruiter and she's oh my God, I love her. she's a lovely person for real like that recruiter she's a lovely person and she kept on coming recruiting to Algeria and she's so lovely Anyways, I gave her my CV and I'm like, hi, hi, la, 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 you know, just like me. Um, because I wasn't stressed and I was, I was so happy to see her. And, you know, I was just talking to her, chit-chatting and she was impressed already. And then she saw my CV and I was like, okay, I can tell you, you know, what I have in my CV. So it's better to always sell your CV. I always tell you that, so always sell your CV. Don't wait for them to like read your CV, you can sell it. Oh, my name is da 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 da, -da. I was working da 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 da, -da. and this is ah, 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 this is what I did in my, as like as my personal experience, and I told you guys, I didn't care, so I wasn't scared, I wasn't like, ah, ah. but if I wanted it, like if I knew that I would love it like I do, I will be like, oh my God, oh my God, oh. maybe they will not take me because I was too stressed. And I was with my best friends, so we were like, you know, chilling, dun, 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 whatever, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and the hotel is like, you know, a few meters away from my house, so we literally didn't lose anything when we went, and she was staying at my place, so anyways, halas, the CV drop finished. We went out and then they will call you by names because they will give you a sticker when you drop your CV to her. She gave us stickers, I left the room and then they came and they called the names that they want them to proceed. The numbers, I'm sorry, the numbers that they want them to proceed and I was like, you know, not my number, oh wow, that's amazing, okay. I know I sound arrogant now, I'm so sorry. I know you're trying so hard to get the job but I'm telling you, if you don't really try so hard, you will get it, but just improve yourselves, okay? So, okay, halas, we entered. I told you in, like, I have a video about group activity. We did a group activity, told you about my personal experiences, and I told you that I'm someone who is um, very, very bossy. I don't know if you noticed it, this, but I'm basically doing the videos alone, so you can't really tell that I'm a bossy person, right? Maybe in the lives you will see that I'm a bossy person. I don't know, but I'm very bossy and I, sometimes I am too stupid. Like I think, especially before, I think that I know everything. Like I'm so, when someone says something, I'm like, no, it's not like that. It's like this, it's like, no, it's like this, it's like that. Like in Algerian, we call it Nana. So I have that a lot. Like, you know, I keep on saying the same thing. Even if I know it, it's wrong, I keep on saying it because I was born like this. I was raised like this, so this is me. Anyway, so we had the group activity. We had the first activity and they will just tell you to sit next to your colleague future colleague and describe him and I'm with my best friend we were sitting come on like girl come on are you telling me to describe my best friend to you I know her by heart like I literally know everything of course I want to sell and this like came to my advantage because I want to sell my best friend I want her to become a cabin crew you know I want us both to go so yeah I sold my friend, she sold me real good in English and we we were talking in English because even at home we were talking in English like when she was staying with me, we were talking in English like most of the time so basically we are talking in English and I always tell you that, talk in English and then I sold my friend, she sold me, poof, poof, move to the next step move to the next step, I told you they will give you like, you know, papers, like a bowl with papers you will choose I told you before that, that I had eye shades and I told them I would make like amazing bustier and I would wear it with jeans it will be super fashionable and I still remember it I don't remember what my best friend had though but she was good because she's really fluent in English as well mashallah so yeah we've passed that stage as well they will call your names and you will pass that stage but then before you leave the room in this group activity they will measure you because they want to make sure that they will call the right people they will not call like short people that cannot reach and for reaching I told you that you have to reach 212 centimeters so guys if you are for example girls if you are 58 but you have a big arm mashallah you can reach 
then you're fine, okay? Because the only thing they care about is that they, you can reach that 212 centimeters for you to close hat tracks, you know, where we keep the luggage. So this is why. And um, guys, also the same thing. You just, you, you don't have to be 180 or something. It's like, as long as you reach that, halas, you're fine. You're 162 or 160 and you have a big arm and you can reach, you're good, okay? Don't be stressed if you think you're short, no. It doesn't work like that. And also I've had a question about tall guys like 190, 193. I've seen cabin crew 190, 193. I don't know the highest I've seen, but I've seen people that I was like with heels and looking at them like this and I'm 170. So I was uh, like this. So basically they are 190, 193. Don't stress about it as well. As long as you have everything that they're looking for, of course they will take you. Wow, you're tall, mashallah. You know, you will be like, ooh, when people come in the aircraft and they see you, they're like, ooh, model in Emirates. You see what I mean here? So we finish that, we leave them, and then we wait for them. They call numbers again, the same numbers that you've had from the beginning. And then they call you. Oh, my name. Wow, that is so nice. And all of this is in one day, guys, okay? Oh, my name. Oh, my number. Okay. Oh, go, 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 go. You know, I room. My best friend also. We did English tests. It was amazing, you know? Like, Emirates English test was so easy. Like, so easy easier than Qatar Airways English just so much easier like you basically just you know the only thing that might um, block you or if you don't know math or you're not fast you know with like counting it's basic because you will count hours you know I told you before for example you're going to Australia you're leaving from Dubai Australia is ahead from Australia from Dubai with like 12 hours okay I'm just improvising here this is not the truth but then like this is not like the real time and then at what time you will arrive to, uh, the flight is 14 hours, at what time you will arrive to Australia. This is basically it. So if you're good with, you know, just like common sense, you will get it, okay? And please don't stress because it's quite easy. The Emirates exam is quite easy. We finished, I finished way early, like, because, you know, I like to think that I'm too smart, especially before my God. I would like to think that I'm too smart. I finished class, you know, like, I, I work like this, actually, you don't know me, yeah? I work like this. I think I don't know what. Even my dad used to copy this, you know. He's like, look, look at her, how she's walking. I walk like this. I hold my bag and I'm like, <laughs> so stupid. Anyways, I went, I left the room. You are allowed to leave at any time. Like when you finish, you leave. The, the only thing that they won't allow you to leave the first 10 minutes because they're afraid that someone will come a little bit late and then you will tell him the questions you get me here. So and then you're allowed to leave anytime you want. And then again, they will call the names who succeeded. Of course, they called my number and my best friend's number and some other numbers. We entered that room and a few other people as well. Not so many people got accepted for the final interview. We entered the room. They will just give you some papers and you check that papers. And they will tell you also to like uh, go home when you go home at night because it was already 7 p.m. I remember the day was so long. So we were tired, I remember I was so tired. And then you have to go home and you fill in so many like things, I don't know, I don't remember, but like so many things, you know, like, you know, details about documents and stuff. So we have to fill them in at night before you come for the final interview. And actually I love the Emirates about this and the recruiter about this because they actually give you a time to choose. They tell you choose any time that suits you and you agree among each other and it was easy, you know, we just, uh, chose timings and we came I had the time in the morning and my best friend just after me so basically I entered and then she just entered after me but I will also tell you when I entered the room after the uh, you know after the English tests I entered the room and then I was talking to the recruiter and I'm like how much did they get how much did they get tell me imagine like I asked they asked her this because I want to know my grade, because they don't tell you how much you've got. I want to have 100, tell me if I failed some question. I was like, how much did they get, how much did they get? And she's like, oh my God, you know. <laughs> anyway, she didn't tell me. I wanted to know how much did I get, really. Anyways, yeah, we left, Khalas, bye, 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 bye. We went home, we did everything, and then tomorrow we came with the pictures and everything, and then, 
you go, you have your final interview. I remember I entered the room with her, only one recruiter, and she's amazing. And I told you, you should make like your small relationship with them in the CV drop because that's when you can stand out of the other people with your amazing attitude like you know you just stand out when you talk to her and she already felt like I'm a chit chatty person so she was talking to me so much like our final interview really lasted a long time in comparison to other people because we were chit chatting like of course she asked me a lot of professional questions and I made a video in Arabic an Arabic video before about um, this like questions and I will make it to you guys in English in Jalla about the questions and if you answer with the same attitude of course don't copy the same questions or answers sorry never copy someone else's answer because they might heard that somewhere or maybe you copied it and then someone else copied it and then you will be in the same interview so you know what I mean like it will be it will look like you've memorized it and this is not good for you so make up your own answers but rely on the answers that someone that you trust and only follow people that you trust and you think that they're doing this to really help you not to just to be an influencer I'm an influencer um, I have many followers I'm very famous I am, you know what I mean, like don't, because you cannot trust everyone these days, honestly, like with experience, you cannot trust everyone, and yes, so when you, when I entered that, and I was talking to her professionally, she was asking me, you know, like giving examples, I was giving examples, I prepared examples just in case, you know, and then she was asking me personal questions and that was so amazing of her. That's why I told you, like, I was so lucky because I had an amazing recruiter. She was, you know, we were talking about personal stuff. I know that she has two kids, like, we talked about everything. And then I told her that I design clothes. So she wanted to see my designs. I took my phone and I showed her my designs. She was so, like, impressed, you know, she's like, oh my God, you're really, like, talented and you really, like, like doing things and you're a passionate person you know what I mean like I have good energy so she was happy with me you know what I mean and I was one of the first like one girl went and then after 10 days I am the next one to go so you know what I mean like this is really good though I didn't plan it and I didn't know that I would like the job but I loved it after and of course I will miss it I will always miss it because it's addictive you know it's really an addictive job and also my friend got it and I went and after two months or like a little bit less than two months she followed me as well and we were a cabin crew together and this was like I told you before like five years and a half ago or something six years yeah anyways so yeah this was it and then I waited I went home and I waited and then I've had an email after two days and they told me to um, put pictures um, not put upload upload normal pictures not with the um, not you know like with the suit and uh, shirt white shirt no with normal pictures because emirates actually ask you to take casual photos like outside and uh, you know not like cutter airways emirates asks for you these pictures so they see you outside the uniform i don't know why <laughs> i don't see the purpose but yeah let's do. and i did the amazing pictures with jeans you know i was like mm -hmm. <laughs> but don't be sexy in those pictures be mm, I don't know the word, but like look nice, look approachable, you know, always a huge smile on your face, even in those casual pictures, but don't look sexy, you know, a huge smile, colorful clothes, wear colorful clothes, make sure you do that, also if you can like take a picture in the nature, they will appreciate that, so please do that, okay, and then I've had a golden call and was like, oh hi, Hajar, so and they actually ask you when would you like to join like would you like uh, some time you know would you like a month two months three months you know if you are going to resign and they know I was working so you know what I mean I just I was like yeah one month is fine yeah until I finish you know my dental things and other documents I will be you know ready to go so yeah I know what after two months which is quite cool you know anyways this is my story for this and also, of course, I will not forget to talk about story time because in my previous video, I forgot to talk about story time. I'm so sorry, but forgive me. I'm fasting and uh, not now, but like during the day. And this is the time that we eat and I'm making a video. So yeah, story time is 
about one person who is an example when it comes to cabin crew job. I told you guys before that when I joined, we all stayed in a hotel, uh, neighbors uh, for like five months and a half, for six months. We were neighbors, we, you know, we talked to each other about everything. So we were basically best friends, you know, like in that time it was quite cool. We're always together, hanging out after training, in training we're together, everywhere we're together. So of course you will become friends with everyone, you know? Anyways, there was this guy and he was a, uh, he was Arab, I will not say the nationality, but he was Arab and uh, he was not accepted until, like he applied so many times with Emirates and he applied nine times, imagine, like nine times and he was rejected every single time and he was accepted from the ninth time, imagine like how much he's dedicated and I want you to talk about this because I want you guys to see like they will not reject you for you. They will not reject you for you, but they will reject for the need. I will make a video about that also, like why they're choosing someone else that you think that you are better than, like you're, I mean, not better, we cannot say this, but I mean like your CV is way better, the way you're dressed is way better. I will talk about that in a video, especially for this. So this guy, he was rejected so many times, but he didn't give up. He kept working on himself every single time. And every single time he reaches the final interview. So he needs to wait six months at least until he applies again. So count, it's at least four years and a half, five years and a half, if not more, you know, when he was working and he has a family and he has kids and he kept applying and applying and applying until he was accepted. And mashallah, he's really, really, really smart. And he is a good example of a good cabin crew member in his job not personal life but in his job he's really good you know like I remember in training he was so smart he memorizes everything I memorize what I need like I will be tested for that I will memorize that but he just memorized everything and I was like all the time like how how can you memorize all of this we don't need this why 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 are you memorizing and he's like yeah I'm just like this so it was easy for him you know what I mean and he was rejected so many times so please don't give up and you will not know why you were rejected, so please keep on working on yourself, it does not matter. Keep on watching videos that you think will really help you, not just people, you know, anyone who comes and talk. As I said before, just make sure that you watch videos, that you read online, you know, that you know the opportunities that are there. Go and apply again. Never give up until you achieve your dream. You know what I mean? Don't be threatened by people who are in that room. You never know, they might take you and not take someone who looks like a flight attendant already or he is a flight attendant for another airline and they took him. So, you know, don't be threatened, don't be stressed in that interview. Be yourself, chill, and or at least be the person that you want to be. You know, the positive person, the ha 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 ha. Okay, make sure you do that, please. And this guy, I will talk about him a little bit also because um, he is a nice person somehow because I got to know him, but I don't know if everything was real because many things were lies, so I don't know even if his personality was... And this was like a long time ago when I was single, you know? So as I told you, like, I used to talk to him a lot and we became friends and after a while I discovered so many things about him that I didn't know and that shocked me because I trust people a lot, you know? I feel like if someone, my friend, my friend, halas, you know, I will give him a kidney or, you know, he's my friend, so halas, you know, we're friends. But then this person, after a while, I discovered that he's married and he has kids. Imagine, like, and he blocked me from Facebook, so this happens a lot, so please be careful, okay? And then I was talking to my best friend and she said that she knows, and I'm like, why didn't you tell me? He was trying on me so hard, but thank God, like, he's not my type, he's not anything, so basically I will not like, you know what I mean? So. Be careful, okay? Be careful from everyone. Be careful, you never know. They might have a family, they might have... You know what I mean? Like, you don't want to be that reason for that family too, though they are the primary reason. And also, I will give a message to guys or girls. Please, if you're applying for this job and you're married already, make sure that you're going to work to support your family, not just to have fun and sleep around with girls. And trust me, you will have so many temptations. You will be tempted so many times. I've seen girls after one drink they jump on you so basically put your wife always in between your eyes because she's the one who's supporting the family and not supporting is only money supporting is also mental like 
everything you know what i mean she's taking care of your kids this is why i was so disappointed with that guy because like his wife is back home taking care of his two kids and he's just you know having fun buying branded stuff buying a luxurious car with loan just to impress girls and to take care of girls with his car so please don't ever do this because god is there watching and came to the end to that which means when you do something, someone will do the same thing to you. You're cheating on your wife? Okay. Your wife will cheat on you. It's cheating on you back home. If she's not cheating on you and her parents really raise her well, she will discover that and she will divorce you and you will get married to someone else who will keep on cheating you until you suicide. So put that in mind. <laughs> so please put that in mind. Came out to dinner to Dan. Like literally this happens so when you do something that thing will be done to you so put that in mind please he was a good example for someone dedicated and applied and applied and applied but at the same time he's a horrible person who you know cheated on his wife and his family and you know what i mean he only cares about himself but who are we to judge i'm just totally telling you these stories and uh, I'm sorry last time I forgot to talk about story time because I don't know what happened to me and then when I was editing the video I realized that uh, I didn't talk about story time so I'm sorry for that but I really have a story to tell you so anyways join us on Instagram if you like as I told you I go live I take you guys with me please join us and there are only a few days left and then Ramadan if she's finished, she's finishes and then we agree on another time. I told you now it's 11 or 11.30 p.m. GMT plus one. But then after, of course, we will do, do it during the day. But now, you know, we're fasting. We cannot really put makeup on during the day. So we avoid doing lives during the day. And also we have no energy during the day. So join us, please. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you're new with us, hit the thumbs up, share the video if you like it. And I really hope that you, I gave you, like I added some to your information and I might help you with this. So thank you for watching and bye-bye.